So in our last session, which was the yesterday session, session number one, we have discussed about the basics of ERP. What is ERP? What, is, what are the different ERPs are available? What would be the SAP S4 HANA? Okay, we also discuss about, we also discuss about the business process. We also discuss what are the different modules would be there. So we have gone through uh, this diagram we have prepared where we try to understand in a manufacturing where basically all the operations are there, where we are doing buying also, selling also, how the things get integrated, and for the different, different things, how SAP has given a different SAP modules, which will be helping to uh, help to connect the those business functions and the departments to run their business operations smoothly. So we also discussed a lot that what is the importance of SAP, uh, why SAP is required, why companies implement SAP. What is the reason for that? That also we discussed and I also try to answer a lot of your questions which is related to the carrier. Today we would be jumping ahead. So if we start our business process, okay, and let's say we start our business process from the uh, sales side. This time we will try to start from the sales side. So basically we are starting our process here from inquiry okay inquiry is the first part which customer gives to us customer comes and he comes with this inquiry which we create in this uh, which will be also punching into the sap system inquiry is that boss i want to buy something and to buy something i require uh, some uh, i require some product so come uh, the customer comes with the inquiry then this inquiry we would be we would be punching in our system. We would be creating a document for in our system. And then we'll be creating a quotation. In quotation, we respond back. Quotation is our reply back to the customer that what he has asked, whether we can supply, if we can supply, what dates we might be able to supply, and what would be basically in the quotation, the major part is our rates. At what rate we would be able to supply. That is our response back to the customer then if customer agrees with the quotation and if customer say okay we can go ahead and we can proceed ahead uh, uh, with the order customer would be giving to us a purchase order customer would be creating this purchase order customer would be creating in his system he would be creating a purchase order and he would be giving us the purchase order and with this reference to the purchase order in our system, we will be creating a sales order. Okay. We'll be booking a sales order. Now this process, the inquiry and the quotation process, this process is called the pre-sales process. Okay. And this process from inquiry to sales order process is also called the order booking process. Now it is not mandatory that we would be having an inquiry, we would be having a quotation in all of the processes. Inquiries, quotations can come into the picture. We are basically for new customer is coming. If it is a repeated customer is coming, we can directly create a sales order for them. The process can also start by creating a sales order, directly a sales order, or by directly creating a, uh, we call it as a customer order. But if it is a new customer, the inquiry quotation process can also be there. Make a note that inquiry and quotation, the pre-sales part, is a very basic functionality given in SAP S4 HANA. Okay. If you want the in-depth functionalities of the pre-sales or to onboard your customer, we need some CRM solution. Okay. Earlier it was provided, a product was there for CRM, which is going to sunset. Now, SAP would be replacing the CRM with the C4C, Cloud for Customer. And we also have a different CPQ. SAP also have a CPQ system, which is Configure, Price, and Quote. Okay. Those are called the pre-sales system, where basically you would be booking all the pre-sales. Right? So this inquiry and quotation, it would be helpful if we are creating. It would be able to tell us what is our pipeline. Okay. What is our sales pipeline? Based on the sales pipeline also, you would be able to do plan a lot of things. 
that if I am having the inquiries of let's say uh, 100 million dollars, it means that I might can have a sales booked uh, in upcoming days for that can be converted into the uh, 20 million dollars of uh, uh, that can be converted into the 20 million dollars of actual sales. Okay. If we are into the inquiry and quotation, that can be converted into the actual sales. So you can, you would be able to plan that what would be the revenue in upcoming days, especially if you are having dealing with a lot of new customers every time, you would be able to prepare your sales pipeline. That's what inquiry and quotation helps. But a very brief solution is available in SAP. Now, once we have a sales order, what we do next? The sales booking has been done. We have a sales order. What should be the next step? Let's say if we consider a scenario kind of a make to order, right? So if you want to now go ahead and supply to the customer, first the material should be available. So let's now go through that process that the how materials should be available, right? Now here, once the sales order is done, we would be having a process here of MRP, material requirement planning, MRP process will be run. That is a planning process. Planning engine will run. And then planning engine will try to check that whatever the requirements are there, for that requirement, do we need to produce the material? Okay. Do we need to produce the material? Or do we need to procure the material? And there can be a cases that the both kind of things can happen. We need to also produce and we need to also procure. How we can also, we need to also produce and we need to also procure. Let's say the finished good we need to produce, but to produce the finished good, okay, to produce the finished good, we would be requiring it. We would be requiring it a lot of raw materials, which we need to buy, right? So MRP, MRP engine runs, it comes into the PP module and a little bit touch onto the MM module also. MM module will also be touched where basically we'll be running how much of finished code we need to produce. And with the same run system, will also tell boss, if you want to produce, let's say 50,000 packet of juices, to produce 50,000 packet of juices, what are the, what is the raw material required? Then MRP also do the calculation. It also check the stock. And after checking the stock, it will also that whether do we have raw materials in stock or not. If you don't have a raw materials in stock, we need to also buy. Okay. So it's not only at the one level of the product, MRP explored the bomb bill of material. To produce a juice bottle, what are the raw materials required? It will also check whether those raw materials are available with us or not. If those raw materials are not available with us, raw materials generally we don't produce raw material we procure. So system would be creating a procurement for the raw materials. Okay. So whatever we need to produce, MRP will let us know a planned order for the finished good. So right hand cycle will go for your finished good. System will tell you that what we need to produce on what date we need to produce and what quantity we need to produce. Maybe sales order came from 80,000 juice bottle, 30,000 we already have it. So MRP would be creating a planned order only for 50,000. Similar way system MRP will identify all the materials and then it will try to identify that what we need to procure and for that system would be creating a purchase requisition. A purchase requisition would be created. A purchase requisition is the first requirement document which can be given to your procurement department that boss, this material we want to buy in that much of the quantity. Now, once this planning process has been done and from the planning process, I have what I need to buy and what I need to produce. If I have that, we would be going ahead Okay, we would be going ahead into the procurement process. So what would be the first thing which we'll be doing after we have a purchase requisition? Quotation, okay. So the, it, the process from here would be divided into the two different processes, right? One process can be our 
sourcing process. And one process can be our procurement process. Here you will be able to also identify what is the difference between sourcing and what is the difference between procurement. How sourcing is different from the procurement. In which case we'll be doing sources, sourcing and in which case we'll be doing procurement. Can anyone let me know over the chat quickly in which case we'll be going for the sourcing and in which case we will be going for the procurement process. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. So basically, if it is kind of a material where I don't have a vendor, uh, I don't have a vendor means that I'm buying it first time. So uh, I don't have a select, uh, my already existing vendor, so I need to develop a new vendor. Or the sourcing can also be done. You have existing vendor, but you know that this existing vendor is in trouble and he will not be able to supply. Or you have existing vendor, but you think that this existing vendor is quoting us a higher price. So we would not be going for the this vendor. We need to identify a new vendor. So when it goes to the procurement, there would be a lot of uh, uh, raw materials would be required. Few raw materials can go for the sourcing cycle. And then few raw materials can go for the procurement cycle. In already running business where the new product has not been introduced, okay? 98 to 99% this cycle for the raw materials will directly go to the procurement. Okay, because this we are talking about our raw materials, we, talk, we are talking about production, our finished good which we are continuously producing it, repeatedly producing it. So generally for the raw material in the business, the vendors would be already fixed. Okay, and we are, will be a long term contract, one year, two year contract and the price agreements with the vendor. And we will already be having a vendor. Okay, but I will explain you the both scenario. What will happen if we go for sourcing? And what will happen if we go for the procurement? If we go for the sourcing, the first document we create in the system would be RFQ. Request for quotation. Okay. Request for quotation. Now we are asking our, uh, we are asking our vendor, give me a vendor, please give us a quotation. We'll be identifying few vendors who would be able to do this and we'll be asking for them, provide us the quotations, RFQ. Okay, they would be re responding to the quotations and uh, in the response to the quotation, then we will be creating a quotation from the supplier which we got it. Okay, quotation from the supplier which we got it. That will be punching in, uh, in our system. Then we'll be going ahead with the quotation comparison. And once the quotation comparison is done, we'll be going ahead with the reward that we are rewarding to the customer, re rewarding to the vendor. Once we reward to the vendor, what would be the result of the reward? The result of the reward would be there would be a purchase order created. This here, a purchase order would be created for the vendor. Okay. And this purchase order, we will give it to the vendor through the email, through the fax or uh, generating a PDF uh, output of it and we'll provide this to the uh, to the vendor and vendor in his system he would be creating a sales order for it and in case of procurement process what we'll be having once we have a purchase acquisition if you are going for procurement we will assign in this case we will already be knowing our contract our purchase info record pricings has been already agreed with the vendor so we'll be going ahead and we will we will be going ahead in this process and we'll assign vendor to the purchase requisition. This we call assign source. We already have a source and we'll be assigning the source and we'll be assigning the source to the uh, uh, to our purchase requisition 
and then this purchase requisition would be converted into the purchase order. So right hand side process will be doing it. If we don't have any, uh, uh, if we have vendor available, left hand side, if we don't have a vendor available, then it will go through the process and then it will come to the purchase order part. What is the next after the purchase order? What is the next step we'll be doing after the once we have a purchase order? PU acknowledgement, good receipt, advanced shipping notification. Yes, very good. So there can be the multiple processes in between. One of the process can be we can have a confirmation from the vendor. We can have an acknowledgement from the vendor. that he has received the purchase order. And then he can also send us the advanced shipping notification. When he is dispatching, when vendor is dispatching his material, he has uh, loaded the truck or he's going to load the truck, he can send us ASN, advanced shipping notification, which is created in SAP system as an inbound delivery. Now, a lot of steps would not be mandatory not acknowledgement, advanced shipping notification will not be having for each and every vendor. <coughs> but for our critical materials where we need a more tracking, which can impact our production, we put this process of re receiving acknowledgements and receiving advanced shipping notifications, inbound deliveries from the vendor. So now the left-hand side process right now we are discussing, we came to procure to pay process. We started from order to cash process. In order to cash process, we have jumped into the planning process that how order to cash is connected with planning and how planning has connected this process to the procure to pay process. Okay. Once we have a, a IBD, advanced shipping notification, IBD is there, then we'll be going ahead and we'll be having a good receipts, GR. Good receipt. Good receipt. Once the truck has been arrived, then we'll be saying that, okay, this truck is arrived. Now I am storing this material into my warehouse. I'm storing my material into the warehouse and I would be having this material available in my warehouse. The warehouse clerk would be having this material stored into the warehouse. Once we do the good receipt, the inventory management part comes here. The inventory management part would be coming here. Okay. Now with this process, we have received the material. Okay. Once the material has been received, the another thing which we need to make sure to do is we would also be getting a, with this good receipt, we will also be getting a invoice document from the vendor. Okay. There would be a, not direct linkage, but there will be indirect linkage with the good receipt. We'll be checking this invoice document. That invoice document we create in our system, the creating this invoice document with the transaction Miro is called logistics invoice verification. This is called logistics invoice verification. Okay, vendor gives the invoice and we check it with our good receipt and the purchase order. We check it with the good receipt and the purchase order for this invoice. And then we would be proceeding ahead with the payment. We need to pay to the customer. A payment will come. Okay. Now this payment would be sent to the customer. Now this would be my procure to pay process, complete procure to pay process. You can see that it would be having an integration with the planning. Planning would be coming into the picture. Then sourcing and procurement is coming into the picture. Then our inventory management is coming into the picture. Then invoice creation will come into the picture. In this invoice creation, when we uh, when we talk about the invoice creation, there would be a finance team would also be play a role here. My FICO module. My FICO module will come into the picture here. 
okay fico people finance people would be clearing the payment also this payment booking also in your department many times the finance responsible do this invoice booking and the payment is released by the invoice when we do the good receipt here also some general ledger gl account entries need to hit okay because the inventory is increasing your grir account and the inventory accounts need to hit so here also you would be having an involvement of finance would be coming into the picture so this would be completely linked with the ap accounts payable module of your finance okay it will be completely linked with the accounts payable module of the finance finance can also directly create an invoice and pay to the vendor i am explaining you the scenarios where it is a complete supply chain solution sdmm fico all are there so how fico would be integrating with your your ap module in the fico would be getting integrated with the procurement module okay or with the mm module this this integration questions has been asked a lot finance consultant would be asked how the full process how their process ap would be getting linked with the mm process and mm guys also is a very common question in the interviews which will be asked you hear yeah, okay just to start first you explain the procure to pay process procure to pay process is considered as a basic process for the sap mm or sourcing and procurement guy so you should be able to explain in detail with all the integrations we would be also running this process in the system okay uh, we will also be running these processes in the system okay now once the good receipt is done let's see what would be happening in our procurement in our production side where basically we already have a, a planned order we already have that let's see what are the other things which we need to do it from this planned order let me use some other color let me use uh, this one so once we have a planned order what would be the next step oh my god okay quality check for the critical goods qm okay let's also integrate with the qm okay let's also integrate with the qm so before we go to the production let's go to the qm so once we receive this material here once the gr has been done as soon as we do the gr this product will go into the qi quality inspection it will go into the quality stock based on the settings we have maintained if we have a qm module in picture it would be going into the qi quality inspection stock q stock right so from here a document would be created for the qm that is called the inspection lot now this is the impact of the german language if i need to give a name to it it would be simply a inspection order we have a production order we have planned order we have purchase order we have a sales order so this should be inspection order but it is called the inspection lot right a inspection lot would be created in the system in this inspection lot you would be having all the information that for this particular material what characteristics we need to inspect and what should be the target values for them whether we need to check moisture we need to check color we need to check ph value all this list would be there that these points need to be inspected so this inspection lot processing will happen and with this inspection lot processing when you will process the inspection lot you would be doing a uh you would be doing the uh, rr we call it rr result recording you will inspect all of this parameter and you will record your results that what is the outcome what is the ph value what is the moisture content and based on that you would be going ahead with the ud rr ud rr ud is a very common terminology which you will see here in the in the quality departments where the sap has been implemented result recorded would be done and usage decision would be done in the usage decision if you say good pass then it will change the stock type after the good receipt it is under the quality 
system will automatically move the stock to unrestricted. Okay, this will become an unrestricted stock. That we are good to use. It will come out from the quality and it will be unrestricted stock in your inventory management automatically with the UD. Then this is the stock which we have available and which we'll be able to use it. That is the impact of the QM module. If the quality is there, if the quality is there, we would be able to check it from here. Okay. Yes, there would be a lot of other processes would also be there. If we have a release <coughs> strategy available, our purchase requisitions can go into the release where somebody need to release it. Our purchase order would also be going to the release. The release strategy and releasing a purchase order would be a big topic, would be covering in detail. And in most of the cases, here you would be having the release strategy implemented. Purchase requisition in this scenario not always, only 5% of the cases for this raw material buying would be having a purchase requisition approval or 10% of the cases. But purchase order, what I have seen, would be there for almost 100% of the cases. If not 100%, 90% of the cases, purchase order goes for the approval because this will make your payment out to the vendor, right? The payment is going out from your pocket, so you need to control that. The risk of uh, fraud transaction happening a lot is here. So here it would be also people are asking release strategy. Release strategy will come can come place here where the purchase order can go into the approval and uh, somebody need to approve it before it need to be sent to the vendor. Dilip is saying three-way check for the goods and two-way check for the service. I would say the both way it is kind of it can be kind of a three-way check for the goods. It would be invoice, it would be your purchase order, it would be your good receipt. Three for services, it would be your invoice, it would be your purchase order, and it would be your service entry sheet. Okay, so this way now the inspection also we have put it into the place and with the inspection we have now unrestricted stock available which can be used but right now it is into the warehouse. So we'll see that how this stock will move from the warehouse to the production location. Okay, so we have a plant order which, we, which has been created by the uh, MRP. In the in the production scenario, the first thing which will be happening is this planned order need to be converted into the production order. This planned order and purchase requisition are not the form document against which the uh, execution will happen because it is generated from planning. You need to check it and you need to convert into the form document. The production order is the more form document against which the execution will happen. Similar way in the procurement, not the purchase requisition, but the purchase order would be the more form document against which the uh, system would be uh, executing, giving it to the vendor and get the material done. So once the production order has been created, then we will be knowing that which machine we need to produce, what time we need to produce it, how much should be the quantity we need to produce, all the information would be there in the production order. Now we have came to the process, we are linking to the plan to produce process. Now you would be able to see here that how my planning is linked with the manufacturing and how my inventory management which started from P2P process will get linked with the manufacturing process. Okay, a production order would be created. Then once the production order is created, we need to do the release production order. What would be the next step after the release production order? What would be the next step? Quickly in the chat window.
bomb bomb is a master data it would be already available uh, to run the mrp you'd already need a bomb pick raw materials okay raw materials need to be sent it to the shop floor okay raw materials need to be sent it to the shop floor so here once we release the production order we also check the component availability and based on the component availability one document which is created is reservation we'll be creating a reservation that boss we require this material at the shop floor there is a different uh, things are available in the repetitive manufacturing we also call it as a pull list from pull list or reservation can be created that how many production order we need to produce tomorrow and how many materials we have today on hand you can compare it and then you would be able to create your reservation with the help of the pull list you would be able to do or you can simply straight away create a reservation this reservation is a document which tells the store that what production requires it okay this reservation would be sent to the store guys and store guy already have their unrestricted material based on this reservation the store guy will do the transfer and with this transfer and with respect to the reservation now we have a stock available at shop floor the raw material will move to the shop floor you see that how the plant to produce process is now linking with the inventory management process and how this inventory management was linked with the quality and how this was actually started from the uh, procure to pay process the interlinkages you would be able to understand it from here it has been sent to the stock the stock has been sent to the shop floor and now we have a stocks available in the shop floor and here we would be doing the with with respect to the production order we would be doing the goods issue when we this stock which we are getting let's say if it is a bottles if it is a pulp sugar whatever we are getting we will be pouring it into our mixers so that the juice blend can be created we will be we will be consuming it in the production we will be putting the bottles into our packing line where basically the juice would be packed so we are consuming this material to consume this material we need to do the goods issue so we will be issuing this material to the production order telling that production order has consumed it so this stock would be consumed through the goods issue against the production order production order will consume those products when production order will consume this product so you would be doing a production order confirmation and with the production order confirmation one thing we'll do we confirm the activities that all the activities which is required for the production has been done uh, activity confirmation can be done and then with the confirmation your good receipt will also happen your good receipt will also happen now this good receipt would be creating a finished goods with this good receipt you have consumed the raw materials and the finished good will come into the picture okay no so there are actually the three activities are there if you will consider it here the three activities are happening we are consuming goods issue we are doing our activity confirmations and we are doing the good receipt these all three we can do with the three different transactions or we can just do the production order confirmation goods issue can happen automatically that automatically goods issue as per the bill of material quantity is called back flushing okay is called back flushing so the back flushing can happen where the goods issues can be uh, goods can be issued and activity is confirmed and the finished goods stock has been arrived we have arrived the finished goods stock if here also you need to check the finished good you here also the quality inspection can come into the picture exactly the same way the inspection lots can be created as soon as you confirm your production order an inspection lot would be generated and against the inspection lot you would be doing the inspections i'm not mentioning the process again here 
But again, the inspection lot, you can do the inspection so that your stock, FG stock can move from quality to the production. Here also, it would be linked I think I have consumed a lot of space. Here also, this good receipt would be need to be available into your inventory management. It need to be stored into your storage location. Sometimes this finished good store is very near to the production. As soon as you produce it and confirm it in system, it's directly go to your finished good store. Sometime you are storing the finished good uh, in a different storage location. So you need to do an inventory management uh, transaction to move your stock from one storage location to another storage location. Okay, to you move your stock to the one storage location to another storage location. To simplify the process, what I am considering here that my uh, finished good store is very near. As soon as I do the good receipt, it will be moving to my store finished good store. Now the finished good stock is available. Now this process, our order to cash process is waiting for the stock to come so that we would be able to sell the stock, right? So here, once the sales order you have created, here it will be pending for the availability check. If you don't have a stock, your sales order will not confirm. To confirm the sales order, we need to do a availability check. Now, this availability check would not happen until unless this stock is not there. Now we have a stock because of this stock availability, which is indirect linkage with the availability check system would say we have a stock. We can confirm our sales order. Our sales order will confirmed here. After the availability check, our schedule lines will confirm. Now we would be able to dispatch to the customer. Once the schedule lines are confirmed, then we'll be going ahead and we'll be creating a, from here, a outbound delivery, OBD. Outbound delivery will be creating it. That this is the material we are dispatching it to the customer. And against this outbound delivery, we'll be doing our picking activity. We'll pick the stock and we'll do the goods issue. Once we pick the stock and we do the goods issue, this storage location stock will get reduced. This will get reduced. Okay, the stock will get consumed. And after doing the goods issue, we'll also raise an invoice to the customer. We have delivered to you. Now you give the, then we'll be receiving a payment from the customer. We have dispatched to the customer. We have given the invoice to the customer and then we will be getting a payment received from the customer where your order to cash cycle is also finished. So this we have seen that overall at the higher level, how the things will get connected, how the R2C process will get connected with the P2P planning process and how the procure to pay process will get con connected how the production processes it will get connected and how again the things will link back to the order to cash process. In this process, again, I will highlight the involvement of the FICO. <clears throat> when you create a production order and when you release the production order, there would be a link with FICO because production order need to be costed. So the controlling with FICO, we have to finance and controlling Controlling will come into the picture here where the things need to be released, the, uh, the production orders, uh, the production order need to be costed. So FICO will come into the picture here. Wherever your inventory is changing. So here you are consuming the inventory. Here also the FICO will come into the picture. The GL accounts need to be posted here. It would happen all automatically. But finance need to make sure that the correct configurations has been done so that the correct GL accounts are getting hit it. When we do the good receipt here, here also your FICO will come into the picture. 
this would be the <laughs> linkage of your PP process with FIC. In SD process, when you do the goods issue, FIC will come into the picture. <clears throat> when you do the invoice, FIC will come into the picture. Many times the <clears throat> finance people might be raising the invoice. Payment would be cleared by the FIC. So this is for FICO account receivable is linked with the SD. Okay. <clears throat> so till this point, till the once the sales order is fully confirmed, this process, the left side process is called the sales process. Okay. And we have a SD, sales and uh, distribution, right? From OBD to the payment, it's called the distribution or it's also called the fulfillment. Okay, that process is called fulfillment. So every is everything is uh, divided into the different different. So we have pre-sales, sales and the distribution. In uh, production, we have a planning and then we have a manufacturing execution. In uh, sourcing and procurement, we have a sourcing process, then we have a procurement process, right? So the things has been divided into the multiple different different sub processes and the number of sub processes will exponentially increase when we jump into the individual modules. We'll be talking about each of the sub process will be having so many variations, so many different different things. Consignment will come, vendor confirmation will come, <clears throat> make to stock will come, make to order will come, repetitive manufacturing will come. So many different sub processes will come into picture. Now I will take a quick pause to check for this end-to-end -end process. If you have any question, if you have any question, feel free to ask. If you don't have any question, I want you to put NQ. If, if you want to get yourself unmuted, you can also raise your hand. Nigomi is saying that you have not mentioned the packing. Yes, the packing can also be done here, which I have not mentioned. Generally, we mention it together in this part, picking and packing, where the packing can also be done. Packing is a functionality in the outbound delivery before you sending, you would be able to pack your products. So pick and pack. So you can consider here, pick and pack. That is a question from Nagomi. Sai Murli is saying that delivery chalan is must for the transportation. So uh, when you create a goods issue, we create an invoice, right? And this invoice also, now it depends on uh, country to country, which country you are doing a business. Okay, that I'm answering size question. If you are doing a business in India, then, then you need to generate here the e-invoice and you need to generate the e-way bill. The delivery chalans are not required. Okay, if you are doing a businesses in the another countries where the invoice is not required, if you want to dispatch a material in India, you require an invoice document, you require an e-way bill document. That is a mandatory statutory requirements from the India government, which you need to fulfill. And not only India, the other many other countries also have those kind of requirements. But for some countries, uh, which I have seen Singapore, Indonesia, they don't need an invoice document to dispatch. Okay. In that case, when we do the goods issue, we create a delivery chalan and we give a delivery chalan to the to our transporter to ship the material. <clears throat> so it will depend, this scenario will depend based on the countries to countries, based on the legal laws, the specific documents need to be created. Go ahead, Hemavati. Uh, I have just put my question in the chat also that when you said that uh, uh, back flushing can be done through production order confirmation and also manually also we can do goods issue separately. I just want to understand 
uh, in which transaction we do, where we say the back flushing happens automatically and how it gets triggered and all. So we are having a different, different con configurations to the master data which we do. <clears throat> that will define that when you're doing a confirmation of the production order, confirmations can be done CO15. The same transaction can be done, used for the confirmation. With the same transaction, you would can have a back flushing can also happen. That will depend on the master data setup, whether your material has been mentioned for the back flush. If the materials are mentioned for the back flush with the same transaction CO15, when you're doing your production order confirmation, the goods issue will also happen. If your materials are not ticked for the back flush, then we'll be doing a manual goods issue here with the transaction MIGO. With MIGO transaction, we'll be doing a manual goods issue against the production order. If it is need to be done back flush tech material with the production order confirmation, whether you do from CO15, you do from CO11N, the system will also do the goods issue as soon as you confirm the production order. <clears throat> Emma, is your question answered now? Yeah. So then uh, goods issue will be done separately and then confirmation will be done later then, right? In in case of manual. Yes, it would okay. be it can be vice versa also. Generally, goods issue need to be done first and then you can do the confirmation. Okay. But system does not restrict you. You can do the confirmation and then later on you can also do the goods issue to the production order. Okay, okay. Uh, me has a question, how to arrange logistics, logistic part for delivery here. So basically the process which we have explained here, where basically we have created an outbound delivery and then picking goods issue would be happening here and under the outbound delivery with respect of the outbound delivery, you would be asking your, uh, logistics provider, the transport provider to provide you the truck so that you would be able to dispatch. If you need a detailed functionality where you would be able to plan the truck and you would be able to plan your freight provider, then you need to link this outbound delivery with SAP TM process. So SAP TM process need to come into the picture where with the outbound delivery, we would be having our freight units would be created and the freight orders would be created so that will go into the separate cycle where this outbound delivery will link into the SAP TM. Freight units and freight orders would be getting created. And with that freight orders, your transporter would be dispatching the product. Okay. If that detailed truck functionalities are required, then this OBD need to be linked with SAP TM module. <clears throat> Helen has a question. During production order release, can the RM batch can automatically reserved with the respective order. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> During the production order release. Okay. So here we are releasing the production order. Okay. So uh, the batch determination, you can get it triggered. Okay. But generally for the raw materials, we don't get the batch reservation, batch assignment triggered at the release of the production order. We get it triggered at the time of the confirmation. But you can mention the batch within the release when you're releasing the production order. At that time also, you can mention the batch that which batch you need to consume for the raw materials. We'll be going through that process in detail when we jump into our PP training, Helen. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Nigome, I am sure uh, uh, we are supposed to do the quality control after the production. Yes, I spoke about, if you have missed it, I spoke about the quality control, which can be done after the good receipt of FG. I mentioned, I have mentioned this process here for the quality, which I have not repeated it here. But if the QM in place, the quality control can be done and the inspection lots can be created. Sri Harsha is asking, what is the, an IDOC? Do these system communicate internally using the IDOCs? No. These full part, which we have explained, is an inherent functionality. And this does not communicate to the IDOC. This communicate with the 
internal data model which has been set up and the ABAP code which has been written, which is called the multiple functional module which has been written by the ABAP. It is controlled by that. Sri Harsha IDOC is an inter, uh, intermediate document, okay, which is used to connect one SAP system to another SAP system. Okay, so when we'll be connecting two SAP system, this is happening in a single SAP system, within the single SAP system. But if we generally want to connect the two SAP system, at that point, we use the IDOCs. Hemabat is asking, what is the change number, how we create it, when to use it? Change numbers are generally used when you change your master data. If you are changing your bill of material, which is a very critical master data, you need to get a chain number. And against that chain number, you need to do the changes in your bill of material. So it is used if the change management has been implemented for the bill of materials changes or the mass data changes, you can implement the changes with the chain number. Chandra said that how often MRP run happens. MRP run generally we prefer to run every night, once in a day. But we'll be going through in the excellence session, the PP people will um, go through, even not, not in the excellence, in the mastery also. We cover a little bit of the MRP live, but we cover in very deep MRP live in our excellence sessions. So uh, the with the MRP live, you have a functionality available now that you can also run more than a day. Or you can also run manually on the ad hoc basis if it is required. But in generally, the automation batch background job run happen for the MRP once in a day. <clears throat> Chong Mi is asking, is IBD is also linked with the TM module? What difference between both of them? IBD can also be linked with the TM module. Where is our IBD? This is IBD, ASN and IBD. This can also be linked with the SAP TM module. If you are the one who would be sending your trucks to the vendor to get the material done. So it would be 90% your outbound processes. It would be linked with TM. Only 10% cases would be there where the IBD would be linked. Many times what happened in the, in the nature of the business, when you receive the material or when you give the purchase order to the vendor, you also make him responsible to deliver the product to your premise. So the transportation is generally handled by the vendor. Okay. But if you say that, no, I would be, I would be handling the transportation on my own. I would be sending my trucks. <laughs> Sorry. I would be sending my trucks. Then in that case, you can link IBD with the TN. The similar way freight units, freight orders would be generated and you would be able to select your freight provider and the execution would be possible. So the difference is IBD is the inbound process. You are sending the trucks to get the material. You are arranging the trucks to get the material. In OBD, you are arranging the trucks to send the material. But in both places, the TM can be linked. Arvind is asking where we can link EWM process. EWM process will also link at the IBD or for the OBD. IBD and OBD can also, the similar way it can link with the TN. It can also link with the EWM where we have extended warehouse management where EWM has been implemented. Your IBD or OBD would be linking with the, with the EWM process but then it would be warehouse processes would be requiring it a specific task that which they need to do it in the in the big warehouse it is not that easy to pick a material okay if you have not a proper defined system is there so the big warehouses would be implementing ewm and the ewm would be linked the process would be linked to the ibd or obd Dilip is asking, what is IBD and OBD? IBD is your inbound delivery. OBD is your outbound delivery. It's a document 
which we get created in SAP so, so that we would be able to track what we are dispatching it and what we are getting it. I believe is also called ASN, Advanced Shipping Notification, which our vendor gives to us that boss and I'm dispatching the material now. So you create an inbound delivery in your system so that you would be able to track it and you would be able to receive it. Okay. Okay, I have covered all of the questions which has been asked. <clears throat> so let's do one thing. We'll be taking now, I would be taking you ahead into the landscapes. The once this end to end process you understand, it is very important to, you know, to, to make a platform, at least you should know that what is happening, how the overall supply chain get integrated, right? That knowledge is very required because when you would be working in actually in the projects, there would be a lot of integrations would be coming it up. You would not be handling your work in your space. You need to speak with another consultant. You need to have a word with another consultant. And that's the point where basically when the integration comes, people are not that strong. Consultants are not that strong. In their area, purchase order, how it needs to happen, they are good. But whenever it comes at how the MRP would be creating a purchase requisition, how it would be linking, how the materials will go, which you have received in the warehouse to the production, how it will link with the production, how the quality management will happen. Those areas I have found that the people are not very strong, right? That's where I have put it as strength that the end to end supply chain, you should be able to understand. You should be able to understand the term logis which is used so that you can be the part of the discussion with the client and you would also be able to understand what discussion is happening right now what i'm going to do with this explanation where the base has already been created we'll be going ahead into the mind map we'll be talking about the different roles we are having what kind of different faces would be there in the project and okay before we talk about the roles and the faces if we want to the process which we have defined Okay, the process which we have defined now, if this process need to be done in SAP, what we required to, if you want to do this process in SAP, what kind of the things we require in SAP? That, what, that is the first thing we'll be trying to understand. And then we'll jump into the roles, faces, and the landscape. Landscape, uh, we have a development system, quality system, production system. Different, different, different systems would be there. Why they have been kept and what will be the use of them that we'll be discussing. But today's session would be a little longer. Okay, so I'm giving you a quick 10 minutes break so that you can take a 10 minute break, get yourself recharged, take a cup of coffee and come again. <laughs> and by the time you're going on break, I can also give you the assignment uh, Bhupinder or Aman, have you sent me the link for the uh, LinkedIn link? Okay. Okay, I will share the LinkedIn link later. We need to, we'll be putting this process flow, which we have created over the LinkedIn and we'll be asking you that whatever your thoughts are there, whatever the things you have learned, also mention it over the LinkedIn comments because I want you to also increase your LinkedIn presence so that when by the time you are getting trained, you are maintaining your links, you are getting your presence over the LinkedIn, so that when you will jump for the job market, it would be easy for you to get the jobs. So I will also talk a little bit at the last at what is how the LinkedIn would be helping you to get the jobs. And that is not that once we get trained and then we need to work, we need to work in parallel. Okay, but let's go for the <clears throat> now we have to discuss that uh, objects required. So if you want to do this process end-to-end -end in SAP, uh, first I want to ask to you guys, the process which we have defined, this is a process which we have defined. Oh, yes. This is a process which we have defined to do this process end-to-end -end in SAP. What do we require? <coughs>
let the answers come from the chat. If we want to require this, okay, Vijay said BP materials. <clears throat> we require server for sure. We require master data, enterprise structure, org structure. Yes, you are correct. So all of this process which I have defined, what is it? These are basically transactions we need to do. This is a transaction process. Now, our aim is that business should be able to do these transactions. And then from this transaction, definitely some reportings need to be generated. But these transactions, as per their defined process, they should be able to do it in the system, in SAP system. If you want to make sure that business is doing these transactions, what do we need? So we need these things. We want to do the transaction data and to do the transaction data, we require some configurations. We require an enterprise structure. What is enterprise structure? That now you would be doing this transaction in a plant. How many plants we have, right? That plants you need to create. How many companies you have? You might be having a different registered business. You are doing your uh, business in the 20 different countries. Every country based on their laws, you might have registered a company there. So you have a group of companies. You have multiple companies, right? You have multiple plants. You have multiple distribution centers. You have multiple sales departments, sales regions. You have multiple procurement departments that is called the enterprise structure that's how the business is structured okay on top of the company is there and then when you go below the different departments are there that is a company structure that company structure need to be defined that is called the enterprise structure so we need to create an enterprise structure in the system okay uh, for the different different modules we will be having a different enterprise structure if you talk about FICO Company and company codes are the key things which comes in the enterprise structure. If we talk about MM, your plant, purchase organization, purchase organization is your procurement department, warehouses, that comes. SD, sales organizations, PP again, the plant and the storage location comes. So these need to be created in the system so that you would be able to do the transactions. Right? So once we have created this in the system, okay, how we will be creating in the system? Who would be creating these all enterprise structures are created in the system by the functional consultants. This is a part of the configuration which will be required, right? And we would be going through in our detailed session when we jump into the FICO MMST specific session. The first thing we start about with the enterprise structure so that you understand enterprise structure and everybody would be creating a company code plant will need to be required to be created so that you would be able to process end-to-end -end transaction in the system. So again, in the individual modules, we'll be having a detailed discussion on the enterprise structure, but the enterprise structure would be required. Then we'll require a master data. Okay. Then we'll require a master data. <clears throat> what master data? SD In SD, we require customer master. In MM, we require vendor master, material master. Material master would be used all the places. It's common. In FICO, GL accounts, profit center, cost center. In finance also would be using vendor master and customer master. That would be the shared one. Finance would also be using a material master. In production planning, we'll be requiring bill of materials, work center, routings. This is all the master data. Now, you understand transaction data. Transaction data is your sales orders, purchase orders, inspection lots, okay? The documents which you are posting in the systems is your transaction data. My question is, why do we require a master data? What is the need of the master data? Why do we require a master data? Now you think about that you are creating a sales order, right? In the sales order, you need to give the customer name. Then you need to give the customer address. You need to type it. Then you need to type the customer GST address. Then you need to type who would be the bill to party. What is the bill to party address? What is the ship to party address that you need to type it? Then you need to type your material, detail of the materials, 
from where it will ship, what would be the quantities, okay? Everything in the sales order, if you need to type it, when you're creating a sales order, then it's a huge amount of uh, information which is required, right? And then creation of a sales order will become very difficult. Same thing will happen in the production. If you're creating a production order, first you need to type, okay, for which material I'm creating. To create this material, I need a 15 other materials, all the materials which is required, which will go as a component in your production order. You need to type one by one manually. Then there's a hell of a lot of time required to do your transactions, right? So we want to reduce that time. We want to reduce that time. That's why we have a configurations. That's why we have a master data so that those things has been defined into the configuration master data, which can be repeatedly used. We can again and again use them. We need not to tell for each transaction what should be its behavior, right? That's why the master data has been created that you will just put the customer, uh, uh, you will just put the customer number and with this customer number, who is sold to party, shipped to parties, addresses, what is this GST number, what is its PAN number, whatever the information, what is this bank account details, everything will come in. You need not to punch in in every sales order. That's why we create a master data. The purpose of master data is to reduce the load from the transaction data. So that the things which is repeatingly for the particular customer, or let's say talk about particular vendor, I'm ordering it every month, three orders, I'm giving it to him. So I'm reusing that vendor, right? So rather than having a information, put it again, 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 every time in the purchase order, I can create a master where the things which I need to reuse in the purchase order can be recalled, right? Can be quickly called in the transaction. That's why we create a master data to reuse the data so that the transaction can be done easily. <clears throat> That's the reason that apart from the enterprise structure, we will also require, <coughs> sorry, we will also require the master data. Master data would also be required, right? Then we'll require a configurations. Then we a lot of configurations would be there. I think it would be a good time. We also jump into SAP system and to show you some of the things from the SAP system. So we'll be using this remote desktop. No worries if you are the first time handling SAP. We'll be taking some navigation session so that you understand how to navigate on the SAP screens. Okay, so this is the SAP screen as for HANA 2022 system it is. In this, if I go into slash and SPRO, SPRO is the part where the configuration has been done. Okay, this would be the configuration menu. This is the part where we create an enterprise structure, right? You would be creating your financial enterprise structure, sales enterprise structure, you would be creating sales organization, distribution channel, purchase organization will be defining it here. And Apart from that, you will see that there is a node for each of the, for each of one of you, there is a node. So there is also a node here. We have a node here for the customer service. We have a node here for production. Okay, we also have a node here for materials management, sales and distributions. Okay, so in the sales and distribution, we have so many configurations we need to do it. We can do it. Sales, sales document, Sales document header, define sales document types. Okay, these are the sales document type. And under that, a lot of settings will happen, right? So let's say if I create a sales order slash OVA01. System asked me to give me the first order type. And this would be the same in all the modules. If you're creating a purchase order, you need to do the purchasing document type. If you would be giving the, your, uh, if you would be giving your uh, uh, production order, you need to type the production order type, right? For the for finance things also, you need to type the invoice type, what invoice type you are creating that you need to do, do it. So these document types are the configuration. This, this depends that how 
your process will flow. What are the things we need to do? What would be the sales order number? Okay, whether it will start from one, two, three, or four. These all are the configurations which we need to define in the system. And to define the configuration, functional consultant would require a lot of discussion with the business to understand what is the business process. And as per the business process, they would be defining this configuration. So if you will just go into the order type, if you go into the position, or here you will see so many different configurations are there. Based on that, your business process can be completely changed. Right, So these configurations which we do it, it impact the business process. It impact that what other things is going to happen in the business process, right? So that's why the business process does not change very frequently. That's why it has been given as a configuration, which will be doing it once when we are going live. Before go live, we'll define our business process. And based on the business process, we'll be defining whether the credit management check is required or not. For my sales order, for this kind of sales order, credit management need to happen or not. Okay, whether when I will be creating a sales order, it will automatically go for delivery block because I want to check some things. When I'm creating a sales order, whether it will go for approval process. This is all the process. These all things we need to configure, which comes under the configurations. Okay, which we do it one time when we do the go live. And after the go live, this configuration does not change very frequently. Until unless business is implementing a business process, new business process, or business is changing their business process, then they can create a change request. And with the change request, this configurations can be changed. Okay, this business would not be having access to these configurations, enterprise structures, business, this, this thing's access would be there with the uh, SAP consultant. They need to maintain it, right? And you should be having a knowledge of each of this configuration, what will what is going to happen if you change this configuration. Business people would be having access to these transactions, creating a sales order, creating a delivery, PGI. That is a transaction they need to have access. But as a functional consultant, you should also be very strong onto this transaction and the business process because you need to also train the business that how this transaction will actually happen in system. Okay, that is the first thing we do. We showcase them how the sales order would be created, how the purchase order, production orders, or how the uh, invoices would be done in finance, how AP transactions would happen. So as a functional consultant, you need to have a good hand on the business process, on to the transactions, which need to be done by the end users, then to the master data, and then to the configurations. Okay, so basically what we require, we want to do the transaction data. To do the transaction data, we require enterprise structure, we require master data, and we require configuration. <clears throat> this is the fine-tuned parameters SAP has given that you have a lot of parameters in the master data, a lot of parameters in configuration. By fine-tuning that, you can meet the business requirement. Every business would be having their different requirement. By doing these things, you would be able to meet their requirements. But still, there would be some things, some situations will come where basically you will say that standard SAP will not work. Standard SAP will not work and we need to develop something. We need to code something so that we can meet the business requirement. There can be a lot of cases can be there, right? So in those cases, you would be required, the developments would be required. That we call it as a rise of W. That would be asked in, in a lot of interviews, Ki boss, do you know about the rise of Ws, how it works? Do you know how to write a functional specification? Because that is the part which a functional consultant need to do very often in the support projects as well and into the implementation projects as well. You might need to review the functional specification or you need to write the functional specification. Now, what is this RISFW and what is this function specifications? RISFWs and function specifications are the ones where you say that business is having a requirement. Okay, business is having a requirement. Let's say, uh, I will give you an example that business wants a purchase order printout. Okay, as per their country requirements, their logo should be there. At the bottom, this statement should come. So that purchase order printout they want it, which they want to send it to the uh, vendor. And they want to automatically send it to the vendor through the EDIs. So here, the two developments you will require. 
first development is creating a form as per the business requirement, what logo they need, where it may need, what kind of statements they need to put, whether uh, how the texts need to be shown. So that form need to be created, right? So that is the one development. For that, you will you will require to write a functional specifications and give it to the ABAP team. ABAP team will do the development and you would be testing it as a function consultant. Another requirement here, which I have told is required another thing, which is the interface. You will require uh, IDOCs need to be generated or you will require uh, uh, messages need to be sent to your uh, 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 to your uh, uh, vendor that as soon as the purchase order is approved, uh, automatic message need to go to the vendor system, which will be telling them this is the purchase order he has received. So we are connecting our system with the vendor system. That comes in the interface. Our interface need to be developed. Okay. So interface development, forms development, reports development is very common things which will come into the picture. <laughs> so if you are not able to meet the customer requirement with master data, with the enterprise structure, with the configuration, then we need to go do the rise of Ws. We need to create a specific report, an interface, a conversion, Conversion is if you want to bring the data from the legacy system during the cutover, when you're going live, the open purchase orders, open uh, sales order business say that, okay, there should be a program created from the legacy system. It will bring the data and it will automatically post the data into the SAP system. That kind of programs are required that need to be developed. Enhancements. I need a particular field within my sales order. I need a few additional fields in additional data B. <coughs> I need to identify my local identifier number, which has been given by given to me by government to create a sales order. That was a, one of the European country we got that requirement. So that local identifier number of field need to be created. A sales order transaction need to be enhanced, right? Forms example I have given you. Purchase order form, invoice forms need to be created. Workflows are if you need to do the things step by step. Uh, standard workflows workflows are now available for the uh, approval process. But if you have anything which need to be done by first, it need to go to my manager. Then from my manager, if say okay, then it goes to the, my senior managers, and then it comes to me. If any kind of workflow step by step process need to be defined, that is called the W workflow. So to get all this process done, you require, you want to do the transaction. To do the transaction, you require enterprise structure, you require master data, you require your configurations, and you will require a hell lot of developments. I have not seen any project in my 20 years of career where we are able to get the delivery done only by top three. Developments would always be required and developments would be done, the design would be done by the experienced consultant. So if you want to become a good solution architect in the future, you need to have a good hands on to the development. You need to understand the business requirement and you need to also propose them the solutions. That part we cover in the internship program. In the job and mastery, we have mentioned it. You can go through the videos, but actually we give you the assignments in the in the internship program, we are basically, we'll say that, okay, this is the scenario. You tell what you need to do, whether you need to change a master data, whether you will require to change a configuration, or you say it's a development, I need to prepare a functional specification for it. Then you need to pr prepare your design, that what should be the design for it. And then you need to create a functional specification. So that part in detail would be covered in the internship program. <clears throat> okay. Any question till this point? It's a good to have a uh, questions. If you don't have a uh, questions, I want you to put NQ. Everyone put NQ in in the chat window. If you don't have a question, if you have a question, onto the question and answer window. Aditi is asking. I have locked to the remote access. Then I don't know what to do. So Aditi, if you are going through the trainings, then you would be knowing from our trainings. For this batch, still we need to do the navigation session and we'll be informing you that what need to do. 
If you want to jump on your own, there is a SAP server access is there available in the Teachable. Go to that uh, product in SAP server access that also includes some navigations. Okay, that what kind of things you need to do it after you log into the SAP. But you need to follow. I would be giving you the specific assignments to you so that you would be able to do the things uh, on your own in the system, right? So there would be a particular ne ne uh, navigation session and we'll also give you assignments which you need to get it completed. Me is asking what is the meaning of the unrestricted stock and restricted stock? Unrestricted stock is you can freely use it. You can use it, consume it in your production. It is free to use it. So these are the stock uh, types, okay? Restricted stock would be your quality inspection stock is restricted. It is under the quality. So you are not supposed to use it. You are not supposed to transfer it. You cannot consume in your production. That is the unrestricted and restricted stock. Yeah, Thiru, go ahead. Thiru, given you the unmute access, you need to unmute yourself if you have a question. Okay, we are not able to hear Thiru, so I will proceed ahead. Now you understand ki bhaiya, jo process we have articulated, what are the things will be required if we need to get the delivery done for that process, right? If the delivery need to be done, what kind of things would be required? Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Now we are jumping into that what are the different roles would be there in your projects. Right? What are the different roles will be there? So there would be end user would be there. Can you tell me quickly rather than I am telling, I would like to hear from you what an end user would be doing. What is the role of end user? Who is called end user? The company who uses SAP, the clients and its employees, client or person who is going to use the system, people to do the transaction, people who would be actually doing these transactions, okay? Who would be creating a sales order, who would be creating a purchase acquisitions, okay? Th those are called the end users. They would be actually the end user of SAP system. You, from here, after this training, if you are, don't have any experience at all, you can also become first end user and then you can become a consultant also. That path also you can follow it. Becoming an end user first and then becoming a consultant. The people who has operation experience, okay, they can uh, try for directly to become a consultant. End user would be doing, we. what are the things we are doing? We are doing all the things so that we can make the end user life simpler. He should be able to do his transaction in the system. Sometimes I have seen that People are so much focused on the configuration that they don't understand the actual business transaction need to happen in the system. If you want to become a consultant, you need to make sure that what an end user do, you should be expert in that because you need to train the end user, ki bhaiya, go there and this is a transaction you use. This is a sales order screen will open. Here you will put the customer and this is this, this thing, things you will require to enter into the uh, into the transaction and then you will be saving the transaction so that it get posted and then how you would be able to see the reportings we have some profiles as a consultant where you will not require any configurations you will not be doing any configuration you would be just be knowing the end user processes in the system and you will be training the end user onto their processes without working onto the configuration and that's a complete pure consultant role okay there would be the roles where basically you would be working into the testing. You are you are SAP consultant, but you are doing the testing. You are doing the transaction which end user need to do. 
and testing it if there is any issue in the system and reporting it. That is also a consultant role, right? So these kind of roles also would be there where you would be completely forced focusing on the end user cycle. So make sure you give a good attention to the end user work so that you can become a better consultant. People have already explained in the chat and very well explained. Your all the people who are working account payable clerks, account receivable clerks, your buyers, strategic buyers, sales representative, production engineers, production supervisor, quality inspector, warehouse clerks, all the people who are working on the ground are the end users. I always say is that a good end user become a very good consultant. If you are a good end user, if you know the end user processes, if you have worked in a company as an end user for a few years, you have all the chances to become a very good consultant. <clears throat> then we have a core users. Now you tell me who are the core users and what core users does. What is the role of core users? It is called core users, super users, key users, CTM, core team members. Consultant who train the end users. Okay, that's good. Vijaya. Help end user with the troubleshooting. That's also good. Train the end user, do the system enhancement, handle the business processes, who guides end user for the business decisions. So these core users are end users only, but they are the specified end users who would be given a responsibility in the SAP project. So let's say if you are doing the implementation, right, in finance, you are having accounts payable around the globe. And in the accounts payable, in the different, different countries, there are the 50, 60 account payable clerks are there, right? And when you need to implement SAP, you cannot involve all these 50, 60 people from accounts payable. You would be nominating one or two people who would be taking a part in the project. They can be full-time to the project or they can be the part-time. They would be giving the 50% effort to the SAP projects where they basically, they would try to understand what SAP does and they know the business process, okay? And they would be telling the business process to the functional consultants, okay? So they would be the one who would be having an involvement in the project. And later on, these core users, because they have gained a lot of knowledge because the, the SAP project goes long for a year, one and a half year, right? During that, they have gained a lot of knowledge. So they become a super user. They are almost near to the consultant. A core user or super user is almost a consultant who does not do the, do the configuration. If you have done a part of a core team member in any of the project in SAP, you are already very near to the consultant. You just need to quickly complete this training and put your profile in the business. And if you are a core team member, I see that there are a lot of core team members, super users are even better than the consultants. How many people here are doing these roles of a core team members or super users or key users? Quickly put me, me, me in the chat if you're doing that role or if you have done that role. Super, super. We have Arvind, we have Taranpreet, we have Kaushal, we have Polson Babu, Ramesh, Amol, Srinath. So these are, if you are not working as a consultant, you are the future consultants, right? And you are the one who would be getting into the consultant roles very quickly. If you are not able to do it, make sure you book a session with me so that I can guide you. But you are the one who should be able to. If you are the one who is training first time here, okay? And we are starting in the month of January, you should be the one giving the interviews in the month of March as a consultant. Okay, the highest chance to become a consultant is for the core team members. Okay, they need to put less efforts. They can become a consultant. Then the end users who has worked in SAP as the end users, or even you have not worked as end user, but you have 
strong business process knowledge, domain knowledge. They need to put a little bit more efforts than the core team members. And then they are the people who does not have any experience at all. They need to put a lot of efforts. Okay. People who does not have any experience at all, I generally guide them. Hey, boss, you can try if you want to become a functional consultant, you can try a role of a core team member or you can try a role of an end user for a year or two. This training will help you to get it done. And then you can convert your profile into a consultant later on. You will not believe they are the two people who do the consulting for me. They was new. They don't have operation experience. Recently, they had a call with me and they told me that, okay, this is the profile. They are getting it uh, in a very, very good company. They are getting a role where basically they would be into the SAP implementation as a core team member. And because of their SAP knowledge, they want to, they want to take them. And in another place, they are playing a consultant role in a small company. I actually suggested them that rather than a consultant, you do that role of a core team member or end user for a year or two. Then you will become a very strong consultant in a two to three years. When you have actually worked onto the business processes, your level of discussion, the confidence of a discussion with the business client is at a different level. And you are the one never worked into the procurement and learned quickly something and becoming a procurement SAP MM consultant and you don't know the business processes. Then you need to put a lot of effort to make sure that confidence comes in your voice uh, when you talk with your uh, clients, right? So these would be the CTMs. They would be the, they would be the bridge. They would be giving the information to the consultant. So when we deal, generally the consultant deal, we cannot deal with all of the end user. We'll be specifically dealing with two to three people who would be giving us the information. Those people would be the core team members, core users. Okay. All the end users who are sitting here, the first thing you need to do is, is when you are preparing your CV, you should showcase yourself as a core team members. All the core team members who are sitting here, when you're preparing your CV, the thing you need to do is you should showcase your uh, profile as a consultant. Because CV is not about what you have done. CV is about what you would do, right? So in uh, most of the companies, this process is also there. If you want to become a manager, you need to showcase the skill set of a manager as a consultant level itself. Then you get promoted to manager. Same thing you need to do it. You need to show the skill set of one level higher what you're doing now, if you want to jump ahead. <clears throat> this will be the end users. We have discussed these will be the core team members. Then we have a consultants, right? Consultants can be the different uh, roles you can play. You can be a part of the implementation. You can be part of the support. In the implementation, you would be working. Generally, the experienced consultant has been given chance to be part of the implementation, but I, when I started my consulting career, the first project itself, I was into the implementation. And that is also world's biggest uh, SAP implementation with the big bang approach. Seven countries together. Okay. So in implementations, you would be working with the client in the projects where basically client wants to implement SAP system. And then you would be helping them to get the implementation done. Implementation will require a lot of good communication knowledge. Okay, a lot of front-ending you need to do. There might be travels also would be required. You need to go at the client place, understand their processes, do the discussion with them, explain the SAP processes, take their requirement, do the designing, uh, do the configuration, what is required. All these things would be required as an implementation consultant. Implementations are more challenging. Okay, and... Uh, you know, there are the two companies are there. One company implemented SAP. They are very successful. Second company implemented SAP. They are, they are just crying that SAP does not work for them. It is not correctly created and they want to leave the SAP. Okay. What is the difference between them? SAP is the same product, right? One company is enjoying it, getting a success out of it. One company is saying that the SAP is a failure. The major difference is how the system is implemented. SAP is very fast. So many configurations are there. One process can be done like this, this, or this. Okay. There are different ways you can achieve the same business process on SAP. Different kind of design can be put it. 
So it's important that how the implementation has been done. That's why a senior consultant, the experienced consultant has been included into the implementation because the same product, if it is not implemented well, it can backfire for the business. But if it is implemented well, the same product, it can create success also. That's why the way we do the implementation is important. Okay. Many of you, after doing these trainings, you will be getting into a project and you will be getting a support project where the implementation is already done. You are sitting, you are handling a ticketing tool and the tickets will come to you. This is a problem you are facing in SAP and you need to resolve this problem. There is no harm of doing a support project. A lot of new candidates, they come, they get the good training and then they come and ask, sir, in the projects, we don't know whether we'll be in support or implementation, what we should do. I said, just go. Every project gives you a very good experience. Don't, don't underestimate a support project. Support project can also give you a lot of experience. Experience matters. Whether it comes from the implementation as a support, if you are not working as a consultant, both are equal to you. Okay, support consultant, we try to put a junior people, the new people we try to put support because they will not be doing the front ending. Less front ending is there. The, the design is already there. You need to just find it out what is the problem or user is doing some wrong thing and you need to guide him. Some things will come where basically new requirements will also come in the support projects also, which you need to handle. Okay, but support happens once we have done. We can, we can work as a testing consultant. You are working onto the testing. In a project, you are only responsible for the master data. Your responsibility is for the customer master data. Make sure that all the customer master data is collected in the right way and uploaded into the system. That kind of individual area also you might be working as a consultant. Okay. <clears throat> then we have a solution architects. Solution architects should have minimum five plus years of experience generally. 10 plus years of experience is more weighted solution architects and more recommended. They would be knowing the multiple modules and in one or two modules, they would be having a very deep hand. Okay. They should be knowing the integrations. What are the integration between the system? And they would be doing the solution architecting that what should be the end-to-end -end process and making sure your order to cash process is linked with procure to pay is linked with finance. Those integration has been correctly mapped that they would be doing. They can be the lead of the module or they can be also the overall design leads. Those will be the solution architect people. Any business scenario comes which link the multiple modules, solution architects need to be involved to make sure it has been correctly defined. If you want to become a solution ar architect, do the mastery course, do the excellence course, then add one another module uh, like uh, EWM, TM, those modules you can do it. Uh, consultant experience for five years, you need to add it. Do a map for function consultant so that you also know a little bit of a map because a lot of development related stuff you will be included. Then functional module overview for solution architect. We have a specific course, functional module overview for solution architects where basically we are giving the all the overviews of all the modules because as a solution architect, you would be strong in one or two modules, but you need to have an overall knowledge on the different modules also what thing happens. Not the deep knowledge, but the overall at least you should be able to articulate a discussion or you should be able to lead a discussion for that some basic knowledge on each module would be required. Okay, I will take a quick pause here. I hope you might have got that what are the different roles would be there? Okay, so you can start a lot of people from here would be starting as a consultant. There can be few people who does not have any experience. They are very fresher. I might asking them to start as an end user or core user, their recipe journey, and then jump into as a consultants. Any questions you have? If you don't have a question, put NQ. Put NQ, no question. Let me check the question and answer window. We don't have anything. NQ, NQ, NQ. Thank you for the NQs. <clears throat> I 
I will be spending five to ten minutes more, and then we'll be open to the question answers. Any generic questions you have, I would be answering it to you. Okay, any kind of generic question you have, I would be answering it to you. Project faces. So in the implementation project, these would be the faces would be there. Okay. A lot of things which I am talking about, the roles which I have talked about, the rise of W which I have talked about, and these project phases also we are talking about. You would be doing as a consultant. Okay, you would be doing as a consultant <coughs> in this training in our SAP job and mastery, or a lot of details would be available in the in <laughs> internship programs also. I have few questions coming it up. Let me check. How to convert from Oracle Solution Architect to SAP? Subramanyam has that question. I am a, a solution architect in Oracle. How can be a solution architect in SAP? So for that, the path should be same. You need to pick it up one module. Whatever is your module in Oracle, pick it up that module. Do mastery, do excellence, and then add on one module. Go for, it would be the exactly same process would be there for you. But your progress would not take the five years of consulting experience. Once you have two or three years of consulting experience, you would be able to convert your Oracle experience also into SAP. Okay, you if you have already, let's say, 10 years of experience in Oracle, you might require two to three more years of experience in SAP to get it converted into a solution architect. Nigomi has a question. Can a solution architect play the role of uh, implementation? Yes, solution architects generally play uh, important roles into the implementation. More solution architects are involved into the implementation because at that place, you need to build the design for the for, for your customer, right? The architecting need to be happen in the implementation. So in the implementation, solution architects would be in, included. Okay, they can be, in, the name can be different. It would not be named as a solution architect. It would be named as your module lead, your module lead, where basically you have a four or five SAP SD consultant, and then you have module lead. Module is, lead is expected to have a knowledge of a solution architect level. Any company who gives chance uh, for fresher in SAP? Yes, there are many company we ourselves has given a charge uh, more than four to five consultants we have released offer they are working with us and few of them has uh, also switched after working for some time they have switched to another companies also but it depends what kind of pressure you are okay it depends what kind of pressure you are whether you are a complete pressure or you have a domain experience if you have a domain experience the chances are more if you are a complete pressure, then you need to go through the implement uh, internship program so that you can get a chance to work uh, after having some experience. If you are a complete, complete pressure, even though you are getting a chance as a SAP consultant or other side, you are getting a chance as a core user or so end user, I would recommend you to play a role of a core user or end user for at least one to two years. There are a lot of people who are able to directly jump into a consultant also, not a problem. But uh, if you are a complete fresher, the, the chances would be the efforts which you require to become a consultant would be much, much higher. Make sure you are ready for that effort. What is the difference for basis and ABAP course for functional consultant? Basis is a complete basis course. You don't have any basis course for the for the functional consultant. We have a functional module overview for solution architect, but we have a ABAP for functional consultant. ABAP teach you the ABAP coding. Basis teach you the, the system admin part that how to handle the system, how to configure a server. ABAP teach you that how to write ABAP codes. We don't have any basis course for functional consultant. MRP line need to happen on the daily basis. Yeah, on the daily basis, we need to run MRP.
okay vijay is facing a issue in the internship batch unable to download the template in the migration cockpit okay uh vijay if you will stay we will i will just check at the end if the time permits okay Yogesh is having a question. Uh, six plus years of experience as a data analyst. In yesterday's session, you told uh, that you will be guiding me on the module selection. Yes, Yogesh, stay till the last. I would be giving you a chance to unmute and we'll have a detailed discussion. Let me cover this project faces and then we'll come to the generic uh, questions. I'll just take a uh, very quick to complete this uh, project faces. Landscape we'll be discussing in the next session. Okay, next uh, Saturday morning, we'll be discussing the landscapes. So these would be the projects which you would be handling. These would be the phases which will happen in the implementation project. Discover, prepare, explore, realize, deploy, and run. There is 60 hours of training in job and mastery on these processes. Explaining in detail what exact activity you will be doing in these phases. Okay. Generally, when we say <clears throat> SAP project, <clears throat> the start of the SAP project, we consider the four phases. Prepare, explore, realize, and deploy. Discover phase, the business is discovering whether they should go for SAP. If they are going for SAP, who should be the implementation partner? What should be the overall scope of the project? So this is the business is working on their own to make sure they are clear. The business case has been approved that they are going with SAP and what is the high level scope for SAP? The actual project is these four phases. Starting from the prepare. Right, the end, basically the functional consultant would be getting involved from this phase, the end of the prepare phase. In the prepare phase, a lot of project management activity would be happening. We will be drafting that what would be the detailed scope and what would be the timelines. Each phase, what workshop would be doing, what would be the timeline, what people would be involved, all the project management related stuff and the planning of the project will be doing in prepare. Okay, your solution architects would be onboarded from here itself because with their experience they need to also help <clears throat> they need to also help to do the planning of the project then we have explore phase in explore phase this is also called a design phase all the functional consultant discussion with the business people would be happening in this phase where you will be getting the requirements, you will understand the as is process, you will prepare a 2B process, you will prepare a business blueprint. In this process, you will give the demos to the client that this is how it is going to happen. You will identify the gaps in this process that what are the gaps are there, what are the things can fit, or what are the gaps are there, and you will be preparing a rise of W list. And you would be also preparing a function specifications. If you don't know much about the function specification, as is to be business blueprint, no need to worry because I will be guiding you to go through the job and mastery where these all things has been explained in detail. But you need to understand that these are the key four phases, prepare, explore, explore and realize and deploy. These three phases, function consultant would be at the full throttle working. Okay, explore, discussing with the business, getting the requirements, understanding it, preparing the design. Once the design has been built in the realize phase, we will be actually doing the configurations. Wherever the ABAP developments are there, that would happen, that will be developing in the realize phase. And all the testing will also happen in the realize phase. We'll be testing it and we'll be making it, it's ready. And the testing has been approved. Deploy phase is also called as a cutover phase. <clears throat> we are basically will be making sure 
all the data from the legacy system. Legacy system is like the system, let's say if you're moving from Oracle to SAP. So Oracle would be a legacy system. Okay. In, or, in Oracle, you would be having your inventories. Okay. You're having a GL balances. You will be having open purchase order, open sales order. These all need to be transferred to SAP. These all need to be transferred to the SAP. Once the cutover is done, when we say that, okay, the legacy system has been stopped and we are live with SAP system, then we went into the run. The initial part of the run would be called the intensive care. We are basically the implementation consultant would be still be there <clears throat> for one to two months, making sure there is no error issues are coming it up. Or this is also called as a hyper care. And then they would be handing it over to the support team who would be taking it ahead and supporting things. These are the high level understanding of the project phases in SAP implementation program. And then the deep, deep, deep and much, much, much deep is available in the job and master. With that, I would be ending our today's topic. Okay. And now before you jump out, Upendra, can you share the LinkedIn link again? I think I have missed in the chat. Now, any kind of generic question you have, you can ask it. And <clears throat> any kind of uh, any kind of uh, question which you are having it, which is specific to the today's topic, you can also ask it. I will first pick the topic which is specific to the today's topic, and then we'll go to the generic questions. Before you jump out, I want you to do one thing. I want you to understand the importance of LinkedIn, right? especially the people who are working to get into a jobs, make sure you increase the usage of LinkedIn. Okay. Make sure you make more connections on the LinkedIn and the best time to do it when you are learning it. Because when you are learning, you are learning every day, you are learning something, right? Go ahead and put your thoughts and you can tag me. Uh, feel free to tag me. Feel free to tag Sastra Geek Solutions and share your knowledge. I would be asking you to prepare a lot of documentations. Why I'm asking you to prepare a lot of documentation, the PPTs, the word formats, uh, with all the scenarios so that you can put your name, you can put your LinkedIn ID, and then those documents you will share over the LinkedIn. Okay, sharing increase the network very quick. So I want you to go into when you are learning, go into the LinkedIn sharing mode and try to uh, share most of the things into the LinkedIn. Initially, when you are not so comfortable to show your presence as to create your own post, you can also go through the other people's post and you can also reshare them, repost them and put your thoughts on that. Or you can comment your thoughts, thoughts on that. What are your thoughts? That also increase your visibility on the specific area which you are working on. Okay. Learning is not a bad thing. Many people say that or my company, what they will thought, yeah, I'm learning SAP. Learning is not a bad thing, right? So you are learning SAP. If you want to learn it, learn it and learn openly. Okay, you're not applying for the jobs as of now. You're just sharing knowledge. You are learning. You have a lot of free time with you over the weekend. You have, you have all the rights to improve your product. You yourself is your product. And make a note, you have all rights to improve your products. Whatever your HR would be thinking, whatever the other people would be thinking, just leave those thoughts behind. Otherwise, you will not be progress ahead. You know, uh, one of the lessons which I learned in the first of years of my engineering is Sabse bada rog, kya kahenge log? Right? What people will think, yeah, I'm working into as a different, different, I'm working as a pro uh, production engineer, I'm working in a procurement, I'm working in Oracle. Why I'm sharing so many things on the, on the uh, SAP side, what people will think, what my company will think, what my HR will think. Just leave those thoughts behind. 
If your target is clear, you want to be SAP consultant, make sure you increase your LinkedIn usage. Make sure you do a lot of sharing, a lot of comments, other people post so that your SAP related visibility can increase over the LinkedIn. And I always say LinkedIn is a gold mine, right? Whatever the exciting projects I got it sitting here, consulting in US, Europe, charging them into the euros and USD, most of them came through the LinkedIn. Most of the opportunities came through the LinkedIn. Okay, so make sure you start working on from now itself so that later once you get experience, you have a good network, you would also be jump as a freelancer, right? Uh, working for the different companies, different projects, sitting at one place and having a visibility around the globe. <clears throat> so the first step to increase your visibility would be what I want you, the people who use less or you don't use, make sure you start using it. I want you to go through this link. Okay. And here we have shown the end-to-end -end process. And I want you to mention your learnings. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. On this LinkedIn post, make sure before you leave, you mention that. You mention your today's learning. Or if you want to create later on a post on the today's learning, you can feel free to use this screenshot. I don't mind. You can also feel free to share your knowledge, the screenshots from the learnings which you are doing from our platform. But make sure whenever you are using the other people content, give the credit. Tag, tag me, give credit to me that this is a screenshot came from Sastra Geek or give credit to Sastra Geek. Not only to me or Sastra Geek. If you are using something from the web, creating a post on the LinkedIn, you are taking some picture or you're taking something, wherever you are taking, always give credit to the source. Okay. Always give credit to the source. That is the ethics of the content creation. Because when you are creating a content, you would be getting something from, from somewhere. You cannot do all the things on your own from the scratch, right? And it's okay to get the things from the web, from the online things, from the other people post, you can take it, but make sure from wherever you are taking, give credits in your post by tagging their name, by tagging the company name. So if you are using this stuff, feel free to use it, but tag Sastra Geek Solution and Parminder and give credit to them. Okay, so you can go ahead and you can mention your comments here. If you just like the things now, that the visibility would not be that great. The visibility would be great if you will be sharing it with your comments or if you are commenting it. Then the your visibility would be increasing on that specific related to topic in the LinkedIn. Okay. And the highest visibility will increase when you are creating your posts. With that, we are now jumping into, I want that anyone who wants to leave the session, feel free to leave the session. But make sure mention your today's learning. If you have if you have created the notes, take a picture of the note and you can also mention in the comments. You can also mention in the comments. Or if you have noted down and digitally copy paste and put it onto the comments. Okay, I will first go to the question and answer. So if you have any question asked in the chat window, please mention into the question and answer window. I have a question from me. Uh, we will learn the config and implementation in the excellence course, right? Did the consider the technical basis? No, no. The configurations you will be learning, the implementation you will be learning in the mastery course itself. We'll be going through the deep of the configurations in the mastery session itself. The implementation also, the job and mastery is a part of the mastery part. In the excellence, we'll go much advanced topics, the new topics which has been added. A lot of theory would be introduced into the excellence. Okay, and the advanced new topics which has been introduced S4 HANA, which is which was not there in ECC, those kind of things, let's say the flexible fury workflows, uh, DDMRP, predictive MRP. Okay, so the new topics will be coming it up into the excellence. A uh, functional consultant should be having a knowledge in. Uh, where is the question? 
Yeah. So does it mean that uh, to become a solution arch architect, we must have a experience in functional five plus years? Yes, five plus years plus plus basics of ABAP. Basics of ABAP. So ABAP for functional consultant is not a full ABAP course. Full ABAP course is very deep and long. It's the basics of ABAP we have teaching for ABAP for functional consultants. Me has another question for the hypercare part. Is it PGLS who usually will be take part in the support team? What is the full form of PGLS? Me post go life support, right? Is that is the terminology post go life support? Yes, post go life support will come in after the hypercare. So post go life support also have two things. One is the hyper care and then is the normal support. <coughs> hyper care, we make sure that the implementation project team is there in the hyper care and they are resolving the issue. And then later on, it would be handed over to the support team. So you can call hyper care as a post go life support. Support team, you can start giving answer to the generic questions. Amol has a question. How much days traveling in this job area while project goes? Earlier, there was a lot of traveling. We were tra I have traveled for the complete project for 18 months itself. We need to station at the client location. So that kind of things was there. Now the traveling has been reduced after Corona. So in my five years of experience, the first five years of consulting, uh, or I, yeah, first five years of consulting experience, we have done a lot of implementation projects. Uh, I was always traveling. I was completely, I was never at my home location, home branch. I was always traveling within India, outside India. I always traveled for first five years. But now the situation is not same. Now it is changed after Corona. People are more open and uh, reduced, travel has been reduced and only for the critical phases of the project, the travel is there. Now, out of 12 month project, you can say that there would be a travel of four to five months. Okay. All of the specific questions I have answered. Now I will be going into the uh, generic question which we have. Uh, one of the question is uh, Yogesh this side. I am having six plus years of experience as data analyst in yesterday session. Okay, Yogesh, can you uh, can you raise your hand? Or before that, uh, uh, Kaushal has raised hand. Kaushal, do you have any question? Yes, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Uh, so actually, I'm working as a core user in uh, steel manufacturing here in US. So I'm uh, and here. We are just starting the SAP implementation. I mean, uh, it is just in the very beginning phase. We are just finalizing the vendor and all the stuff. So I mean, our implementation partner. We are just final finalizing it. So uh, if if I'm done with this course, as you said, by March, so I can start applying for jobs uh, as a consultant. Okay, which module uh, uh, you PPC, are in? I have enrolled in PP module. Uh, I'm I'm working as a PPC consultant, a PPC analyst in steel manufacturing. PP. Okay. <laughs> and how many years of experience do you have? I have around seven eight years of experience, and I also have a master's degree in supply chain uh, from US. Okay. So what I will and have you done any uh, project as a core team member before this project? So I have worked on SAP as a GRC consultant, I mean, after my engineering, but not as a PP consultant or any not other PP consultant. Yeah. The GRC is the one in the security part, right? Right, security, right. Okay. What I would suggest you caution, you complete this training, mastery, excellence, and you don't apply for the jobs in March. Okay. 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 With this mm -hmm. training, we will be getting a lot of learning related to PP. And then okay. you have your increased hand as a core team member. 
we are basically what are the things are happening you need to go in deep what are the right. business blueprint documents are preparing what are the config documents are there what are the functional specifications are there and you need to also test with your own hand that mm -hmm. process can take for you around uh, nine months but i okay. want you to live that process and then mm -hmm. when you will be jumping it rather than march we'll be jumping it after six to nine months when you have a lot of knowledge from this project we would be you you would be able to showcase your this knowledge as SAP consultant, and mm -hmm. then you would be able to jump out. Okay. So I would okay. I would say that if it is a good company, you don't have any much issues there. You mm -hmm. continue this project with this okay. learning. With this learning, you would be able to know the config yourself itself. So you would be also be able to jump in your system, and you would okay. be able to check what, what your consulting companies has done the config. You can also right. cross cross check or cross question them why you have done like this. Okay, right. Yeah, so that is what I would suggest you stay mm -hmm. with your current project, get mm -hmm. it completed, and get the trainings also completed. And after having that exposure, uh, mm -hmm. try for a switch. Okay, and the market here is good. Like, uh, I mean, I can so get a switch with PPE. I mean, in US. Yes, as market is good, not a problem. With this kind of exposure, you will get. You, okay. I don't think you will get any problem. Make sure that uh, if you are into the steel check, if the variant configuration would be there. Yes, yes, yes. VC is there. VC is there. Okay, just drop an email to our team that in future we have one VC consultant. Okay. Uh, and we'll check with them if we can provide the training, but we don't have a specific VC training. But we have a very good overview training in the PP Excellence. There is almost four hours of trainings are there in PP Excellence, which can give you a quick overview of VC. So you need to also make sure that specific VC hands, you make a strong hand there. Uh, whatever is available from our side, you take it our side. If you get it something from outside on the VC training, feel free okay. to go. And also get yourself trained on VC. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Koshal. Yogesh, you can go ahead now. Yeah, hello, sir. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Uh, so just what you're talking about that market, because right now the thing is uh, in Indian market, whenever I'm trying to apply for the jobs as a data analyst, so everyone is looking for some specific uh, technology uh, specialist or they wanted to have, as, a, as a, the experience is increasing, so they wanted to have someone who has handled the teams, like a lead position and the manager managerial positions and all. And in my case, uh, I'm, I have worked on uh, like, like the team which I have worked. The maximum size is like two or three members. So it's like one person will be the handling. One person will handling the entire things and all. And whenever we are, I'm just I'm just trying to switch. So the questions they are asking like how many members were in your team and how much, or how many people you have handled and likewise that. So likewise the rejection rate is increasing instead of selection and all. And if I'm just going with the some specific technology which I have used in my entire career. So there are also that same things are happening. So that's why I just wanted to know whether if I'm just switching into this SAP, so whether that will help me to get a better job or not. As a data analyst, what kind of technology you have used and what kind of things you have done? Yeah, right. okay. uh, so, so for the programming language per, uh, perspective, I have used R programming and Python. And for the database, Oracle database is there, then Google BigQuery. Mm -hmm. And for... Uh, uh, if the data is less and then the Excel is there, then in the Excel, advanced Excel I have used. And for the visualization parts, Tableau, Power BI, Yellowfin, and then Google Data Studio. So these are the tools and technologies which I have used. And what is your current package? Uh, 16, 1, 6. 16, okay. Now, what are you, what you are doing and what you are trying to do is the two different trades. Right. right. Two different trades. So generally those kind of shift people try to do it because what they are doing as their job, they don't like it. Okay. <laughs> so right now you are into the coding and uh, those things are Python, those things you are doing it, right? So do you feel confident? Uh, do, do you feel that uh, you don't want to do this coding and you want to switch to something, uh, something else? Is, is that is the case why you are looking for switch? Uh, actually, I'm looking for switch because mainly because of the job security and all because the market right now and the projects which we are having. So those are completely different kind of a things. I mean, those are not at all good here right now in my current role. Hmm. 
So uh, what I would say to you, Yogesh, the uh, SAP market is good. Mm -hmm. But you would also be looking that if you are jumping into SAP, at least you will jump into the same package or the higher. Mm -hmm. Right. So to do that, to jump into the same package or to do the higher, you need to put a lot of efforts. Okay. okay. With the with the single module, it will not work because your 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 package which you are getting it, you would be expecting higher than that. And with single module, it will not work. So you need to learn multiple modules for it. Mm -hmm. right so right. that modules i can help you to get it selected but make a note that it would be kind of a u-turn for you right okay it would kind of a big sharp u-turn which will be taking it up mm -hmm. if you are ready for it if you want to go for it the working culture would be quite different here you are working onto the coding in the functional consent and no need to work on the coding you just need to have a <clears throat> work on to the business processes rather than on the coding part. So that would be the change. Okay. Uh, let me just correct myself. Actually, from last one year, I have not wrote any single code apart from the queries, like Google Big Queries and all. So other program I have not used because right now the client is, uh, means right now I'm into the, into the healthcare domain. So the hospitals are my clients. So I'm just working on the patient's data. So I have to just create a report as per that analysis done by the doctors and provide them with the solutions or what can be the insights. The next next thing is what can be done. So that is the that is, that is my current role. And prior to that, I have worked in BFSI, Banking and Finance. I was working with Crisil. And then I shifted to Multi-App Data Investment. Over there as a data analyst, I worked there. But I, I was, uh, my focus was mainly to automate market strategies, share market strategies. So it's like completely mixture of BFSI and healthcare now. Okay, I got it. So I would suggest you, you can go for, if you really want to go for SAP, you can go for SAP SD. Okay. okay. And you can go for SAP SD Mastery. And then after SAP SD Mastery, I will discuss with you uh, because of your healthcare domain experience. The another module which can be good for you is SAP CS, customer service, <laughs> which would be a niche module. Right. Okay. With that combination, I think you would be able to achieve the similar package or the higher package. You will be able to jump into the SAP. Okay. Okay. So okay. Uh, get in touch with me if you have any doubts while doing the course. Okay. Mm -hmm. But make sure your focus should be very high and the effort okay. should be very high. Mm -hmm. Because we are doing a complete switch. And the normal switch, uh, the normal average switch for these kind of jobs are nine months. Right. Right. It would not be a very quick one, but you need to learn prepared mm -hmm. and then do a switch so it can take easily six to nine months okay okay okay, so no problem. okay. then i have a question from harshad uh, i have scheduled uh, i have scheduling a background job for 30 days to generate the material document against goods issue for some days it is generated and for some days it is it was not generated what is the reason Ashur, you need to explain the scenario in detail. I think you are doing into your project scenario. You need to explain in detail. And then I would be able to suggest you what is happening. Okay, you can raise your hand. I can unmute you. And then you can explain in detail. Shakti is having, I requesting for S4 HANA, but my manager not giving. Uh, I have certification also. Uh, Shakti, you can also unmute yourself, raise your hand. I will give you the unmute access and then we'll have a discussion in detail what actually the scenario is. Murli is asking, any difference between on-premise and on-cloud configuration for functional consultant? Yes, Murli. The on-cloud configurations is little different. The uh, It is not structured as a SPRO. So it is a little differently structured into the on-cloud when it comes to the configuration. And uh, there's application manage my solution, which we use on the on cloud system to do the on cloud configuration. Okay, I have also created one uh, session on it. It is available in the step up circles. That session is available on the step up circle. Uh, you can go through that session. In that session, I have explained that uh, uh, 
in that session i have explained that what is the difference key differences between the cloud and the function consultants uh, key difference for the cloud and on premise yes shakti go ahead Hi, Burminder. Good morning. Hi, good morning, Shakti. Yeah, I have a total of uh, 7.5 years experience. In that, I have worked on uh, two rollout projects. So, mm -hmm. in my current role, I am requesting my manager to assign me an implementation project starting from the scratch. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's not happening. He's postponing and he's asking me to stay in the same project like support project currently i'm uh, handling he's asking me to support on the same okay uh which module you are in sd complete sd uh, and this is the ecc one right yes current one is ecc yeah current one is ECC. okay which company it is uh, it is boss bg B boss it robert bosch yeah hmm. Okay. You know that sometimes the uh, the project managers also does not have many options uh, to get you put it in, into a project. So they have a limited handful of projects which they need to put resources on. So if he does not have anything and he need to put someone on to the support project so that the things can be done. Okay, if uh, you are really not getting it, you can also go and try outside. Okay. Okay, you can also try for outside. How's the market outside? Market outside is very good for the experienced consultant and for the... <clears throat> uh, but you need to make sure you are upskilled on S4 HANA. Only certification will not help. Okay, let me ask you a few questions. So do you know that how the uh, sales order approval process work in S4 HANA? Uh, no. The SAP advanced intercompany process work? Uh, no. Do you know the the uh, how the smart fulfillment applications works? No, no, right. So, so one thing is that getting a certification, and other thing is that to actually have a knowledge on the things which you would be able to speak in the interview. What I will suggest you, you go for SAP S four Hana sourcing uh, uh, sales and distribution excellence. These excellence in these excellence product, all these topics has been explained. And okay. in addition to that, there, there are the two courses would be there: HANA Migration Cockpit and A to Z Fury for Functional Consultant. These two courses would be very important for you. So make sure that you go through those courses and get those completed and then go into the market. Okay. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Yes, Subramanya Marao, you can go ahead. Yeah, yeah thanks for being there for all your time. Um, sorry, I'm extending your uh, meeting further, though you are not feeling well, I think. Uh, yeah, just a quick one. Uh, you know, uh, my, I have a lot of experience in Oracle, and now, uh, or as I mentioned earlier, my company, uh, merged with uh, another company and almost three to four years I am doing the integration from Oracle. But, you know, the, there are two teams, Oracle and SAP. So, they are not really welcoming, right? So, that's the reason I started looking some training institute who can provide me some kind of training so that I can be in the streamline. Um, I have only, considering my age, I have four to five years. Uh, so, my goal is currently just to sustain, not making any career or anything. Uh, but I may get some role, but I have to sustain. That's the reason I'm trying to learn, uh, just like I learned Oracle for the first 25 years. But I know its time is very short. So And also, because of my involvement with the integration and all, I'm so busy. I'm, I'm in US, and uh, that's why yesterday, Friday course, I missed but I will try to join. I, I went through your recording. It is really uh, useful. 
I started doing on my own, creating my own company code and all those things, all those things I liked. So if I have some question, uh, how do I get some quick uh, help support, you know, if I get stuck or, or something like that? And that is the one main thing. Can you remind me which module you have taken? Yeah, I have taken uh, this one, uh, MM, uh, the sourcing and procurement I have taken. But I plan to take further also, depending on my requirement. Currently, you know, what they, what I'm looking my uh, opportunity here to get into, uh, we have a, we use intercompany very heavily. That means I should learn uh, procurement and uh, little bit of sales order, but mainly procurement. And also subcontracting, you know, we use a lot of CMOs. Subcontracting is the main thing. That's the area I'm doing a lot of integration now. I may have an opportunity. So in order to learn, I think subcontracting is part of the uh, your mastery course or the, in a future uh, excellence course. Uh, uh, MM subcontract, subcontracting, right? Yeah. It is part of the mastery course itself. So have you taken a bundle access or you have taken the... Mm -hmm. Bundle access you have taken. Okay. I think I have taken three fifty seven dollar. I paid. I don't know. It's a bundle, right? Yeah, mastery bundle. I I got the access, and I like your system. Actually, it's very stable. I it was more than my expectation. Uh, so that is really good compared to I have taken some of the Oracle private courses. The system was not really stable, but this is really good. I really uh, whenever I find a time, I do that. I've already done at least 20% of that. But uh, my question is, yeah, I need some help. I will send an email or maybe I, I'm trying to, maybe in the uh, WhatsApp or something, some guidance I may need when, if I get stuck. Uh, that is the one thing. And uh, secondly, um, I may, ha may have to learn a little bit on the PP, PP uh, planning side. Mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, another area I am looking a lot of opportunity here. Depending upon opportunity after another one year is no problem. After that, everything will be moved. Uh, now currently they are doing the manufacturing uh, integration. So after one year, I want to get into some area. I am sure I will, they will give me uh, opportunity. They have already told me that before that, in within one year, I want to quickly do some kind of uh, uh, hands-on and uh, you know do that. So that's why I started. This is the first uh, class I attended, which is really good. But I may not be able to attend all the classes because of my involvement there, especially on Fridays here, because your your Saturday is my Friday. That's why yesterday's class I missed. Um, but so, but still, I will. I want to access the uh, your recordings and everything. Uh, not the one which you have given the bundle. I am. I want to have the latest live recordings, whatever day-to-day -day happening so that I can uh, go through and uh, do on my own. Uh, just wanted to tell you because I'm not a very LinkedIn fan. I'm not really using the um, LinkedIn or any other uh, uh, social media very actively. Um, so, but I want to just send a mail or some other way to contact you uh, so that I can get some quick help. Yeah. Yeah, so the <clears throat> there are multiple ways you can get the quick help. Uh, first way to get a quick help, uh, Mr. Subramanya, Mr. Subramanya, is uh, yeah. uh, we have a Telegram group, right? So you you need to also be use a little bit of technology. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. So in Telegram yeah. group, we have all the people who are learning, right? So mm -hmm. those people who are learning it they are actually uh, are into the telegram and all of the students who have already learned they are also there so apart from me there are other consultants are there kunal is there and now uh, uh, neha would be there so they would all be able to help you out quickly if you put your query onto the telegram group very good actually i i registered but uh, is there any specific uh, group i have to join in the for this because i joined uh, SAP, PP, MM, ST, Ariba, FICO, one general group, but I don't know, uh, even SAP Step Up Army, I quickled, but I don't know whether is for this particular class, is there any specific group? Yeah, we have uh, one specific for the sourcing and procurement. So Bupender or Aman, 
please okay. give uh, the link for the uh, telegram so that uh, 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 so there is a specific telegram group for sourcing and procurement sastra geek sourcing and procurement where all uh, uh, all of the paid members are there and then the interactions happen so there basically you can get a quick help <clears throat> or you can jump into the live session even though live session is happening on the topic x you ha you are having a question on the topic y you can uh, stay till the end and you can ask the question into the live session that is the second way ah, okay. so the best way is a telegram okay thank you so much thank okay. you so much for yeah, if you don't get the link for the telegram you can just uh, drop an email to support at sastragik.com and my okay. team would be able to provide you and help you for the telegram login Perfect. Thank you second so much. Thing, second thing, what I understand is that that uh, being a 25 years of experience, what you would be looking is to into the jobs, even though you cross your age of 60, right? You should yes. be able to do some freelancings, right? Yeah. To do that part, it is very important that right now you are not using LinkedIn, but start using LinkedIn. Because a lot of freelancing opportunities and in US specific market, a lot of opportunities comes through the LinkedIn. So if you'll be started, started using it now, then maybe in a year or two, your profile and your account will become uh, available in the market with a lot of links and a lot of connections and a lot of visibility. Then it will help you in future uh, to do the SAP consulting even you have crossed 60. And I have many people who I know they are still doing the SAP consulting even they have crossed 60. They are doing the freelancings. So make sure you increase your usage of LinkedIn. Yeah, thanks, Parminder. Uh, anyway, I'm 60, so another five years I may work more than that I may not be able to work. So uh, mm -hmm. my my goal is just to sustain another five years. That's all. Okay, okay, sure, yeah. sure. Nice yeah. to have you. Yeah, yeah, I will try to you know join your session. Uh, I, I love that whenever I get a chance and... Uh, um, I also try to do some hands-on. That's where I may need some help. Um, that's all. Thank you so much. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Balaji Patil. Balaji, you can go ahead. Sir, hello, sir. Yeah, hello. Um, uh, sir, I'm talking about Germany. Se baat kar raho abhi. Um, to actually, I have um sourcing and procurement ka bundle le, uh, mastery bundle. And my question is that because the timing of the timing doesn't match, I was joined at 2 o'clock in the morning. और लिटिल बिट डिफिकल्ट होता है इतना खुद को मोटिवेट कर पाना कि सुबह उठ के ये क्लास करूं मैं ट्राई करता हूं कि ऑनलाइन ऑनलाइन लेसन से ही देखकर मैं प्रैक्टिकली आप सेशन करूं या फिर असाइनमेंट करूं लेकिन सम हाउ मैं ऑनलाइन लेसन को मैं मैं ऑनलाइन लेसन के साथ मैं खुद को ओरिएंट नहीं कर पाता दिक्कत आती है क्योंकि जो स्टार्टिंग के जो वीडियोस है उनके तो असाइनमेंट में कर पाता हूं लेकिन उसके आगे जो है पता नहीं सब पता नहीं आता कि एग्जैक्टली exactly उसमें से असाइनमेंट क्या है मतलब आप अच्छे से एक्सप्लेन करते हैं आप एक्सप्लेन कर रहे होते कि ये ऐसा होता है वो ऐसा होता है लेकिन एट द एंड ऑफ द वीडियो मुझे ये नहीं समझ आता कि एग्जैक्टली exactly अब असाइनमेंट में करना क्या है और उसमें भी मतलब लर्निंग के लिए तो दो उसमें दो है ना गेमीफायर है और मास्टर एक है तो एग्जैक्टली exactly उन दोनों में से कौन से ट्रैक को मैं फॉलो कर सकता हूं okay. और अगर मैं ऐसे पूछूं कि मुझे अगले दो महीने में एंड ऑफ फरवरी तक मुझे टीएस 452 को अपीयर करना है तो हम किस तरह से मैं उस इस चीज को ऑप्टिमिस्टिकली प्लान कर सकता हूं ठीक है सो यू नीड टू गो थ्रू द गो थ्रू द नॉट द गेमीफायर इफ यू आर ओनली फॉलोइंग द videos i will suggest you go for the sourcing and procurement mastery one okay okay sir and in that uh, just drop an email to support team okay and uh, mention that the particular uh, videos some example of two three videos where you are struggling 
to get the assignment that what exactly the assignment need to be done. Okay, we might not be having assignments there. Now we have two more people who can help us to define the assignment. I would be I would be assigning it to them. Okay, and if there is some assignments missing, we will get them added up. But just to get it started, just give that couple of examples to support him. Uh, okay, sir. I will. I will do it. I will do that. Okay, sure. Okay. And sir, one more last question. Like, uh, if I start doing everything continuously, uh, like how much time I can expect to finish all the assignments and get ready for the uh, SAP examination? Hmm. It would take around three months of time. Okay, sir. Okay, make sure you also go through the videos which is available in SAP TS452 videos. <laughs> that also you go through it. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, okay. Uh, I have a question from Sai Murli, but I think Sai Murli is not able to unmute. Uh, yes, I am early. You can speak now. Your voice is very low, Sai. No, still it is very low. Hello. Okay, now, sir. I'm out of ah, now it is okay. Yeah, sir, actually, I have a doubt. Uh, I'm currently working as an end user for a year. And that too, particularly restricted one to the creation of purchase order related on that. My doubt is like, I have enrolled, I have enrolled this. And uh, is it uh, good to look up for a job after completing this course? Or is it uh, good to have? So gain some experience in it after applying for a job. No, so what is your background experience? Uh, one year in oil and gas and uh, currently in IT procurement. IT procurement. Uh, how many years in IT procurement? IT procurement in one and a half years and one year in oil and gas field. Okay. Are you using SAP? Yes. As an end user only. As the end user, you're using SAP. Okay, that's good. So what you need to do, SAP Sourcing and Procurement Mastery course, you need to complete it. Once the course is completed, 50%. At that time, you need to start your SAP Job and Mastery. SAP Job and Mastery will start from the CV preparation. So you need to complete the CV preparation. And by that time, you have completed the CV preparation course and your SAP Sourcing and Procurement course would be almost finished 65%. At that time, you should go into the market, okay? And then every week, you would be completing the job and mastery, and then you would be also completing some part of your uh, uh, sourcing and procurement mastery. With every week, new learnings, you should go and update your CV on the weekly basis, okay? But once your, 50, once your total 65% course is completed, you should go in market. Okay. It means, like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, after completing... Excellence and uh, getting into mastery of completion up to 50%, I have to start applying for the job. So I will repeat again. Once you complete 50% sourcing and procurement mastery course, start the job and mastery. Job and mastery course itself will start with the CV preparation. Okay, prepare your CV. And by that time, your sourcing and procurement mastery course will finish by 65%. Apply for the jobs. And then you can continue completion of your sourcing and procurement mastery and job and mastery in parallel. Okay. Uh, Ramesh. Uh, hello. Am I audible now? Yeah, you are audible, Ramesh. Yeah, so I was asking about like at the moment I am working in a company uh, uh, with the you know purchasing assistant role and then though the company do not have SAP but they are recently implementing SAP uh, Ariba. So uh, in your previous session you mentioned like you know adding two or more 
module in your uh, you know uh, in your career it would be much better so i think uh, sap m mm uh, sourcing and procurement if i learn what would be your suggestion i'm going to enroll now so you uh, you need to learn sap s hana sourcing and procurement and ariba both you need to learn oh, because well. ariba is the one which your company is implementing right are you are yeah you... yeah yeah so they are implementing but they will train me definitely they will train me that's their job responsibility they will train me and they are tra uh, they will give training to everyone are you are you part of a core team member? You are you are involved into the implementation project? No, no, no. I am not a part of core team member. I am uh, like um, my middle management team are the part of it. And then, yeah, so basically I am doing all those kind of, you can say that I am doing a buying kind of stuff for the hospital. So, yeah, so <clears throat> most of the time when the all the purchase order after the requisition, uh, we are the one who, who do the approvals. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Yeah. So you go for sourcing and procurement mastery. You wait your company to train you on Ariba, but also take Ariba seriously. I want you before you do any switch, learn a good hands-on Ariba in your current company, and then you can start for the consulting job. So once sourcing and procurement is completed, your company trained you in Ariba. You got uh, yeah. end user training on Ariba. Then you do yeah. the uh, consultant level training on Ariba. Then your profile would be very strong. Sourcing okay, so you you mean like uh, because uh, they are in the phase of implementing, I think it would take another three to four months uh, to get trained people on those things. So like by the time I get finished, I have a bit of knowledge of Ariba. And uh, then after that, I have to enroll another course with you. I am not wrong. You said. Yeah. So what I am saying that you enroll for sourcing and procurement S4 HANA first. Okay. okay. That's a mastery, right? Not excellence. Okay. Not the excellence, mastery. Yeah. So that course will finish in uh, three months. And by the time your uh, Ariba will start in your company, get trained in Ariba in your company first. And then okay. come back to us and also do the Ariba consultant level training. And then okay, you so need to go out in the job market. Uh, I'm sorry to ask you, consultant training is uh, different, right? You, uh, I'll learn some technical part in that. No, so there is, a, the, your company will be training you only the part which you need to handle in Ariba. Yeah, 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 yeah. They are training me only the buying part. That's it. Yeah, so Ariba is big. You need to also know the another functions of Ariba. Okay, when we say the consultant level training is that how the Ariba implementation will happen as a functional consultant, what you need to do. And you need to go beyond your part, only apart from buying, sourcing, other areas also you need to get trained on. Downstream, upstream, both you need to get trained on. So that training you will be getting it from us. And then you can go out in the job market with the combination of Ariba and sourcing and procurement. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. <clears throat> okay. Uh, with that, I have answered all of the questions. Uh, now I will switch to Vijaya if Vijaya is still there. Yeah, Vijay, can you quickly explain me what is the problem you are getting in uploading downloading the template in migration cockpit yeah down we are not able to download the templates every we all all tried like even mmp people also tried the same issue coming what, what is the issue we are unable to download the template no what it's error? showing it's downloading but uh, it's not downloading in the system i don't Oh, it's, it's just so it's downloading, but uh, uh, it does not it's... get downloaded. Huh? Yes, yes. Even uh, Javesh is seeming, uh, uh, getting the same problem? Yeah, even Neha. We are all tried together, but we are all getting the same issue. Uh, would, would it be possible for you to share the screen and show me? Yeah, yeah sure. 
you want to down, uh, download or upload? Are you able to see my screen, sir? Yes, I am able to see your screen. Thank you. Hmm. Can you click on customer? Customer? Here? Customer, huh? Ah, hold on. This one, sir? Hmm. Yeah, this one, this one. Go to the customer. This is a migration of projects. Project, yeah. Hmm. This one? Now go back. One more step back. One more back. Hello, sir. On top now, there's like uh, some downloadable error. Cross sign are showing. Can you click on this? Uh, oh, very good, Bupinder. On the on the browser, there is a pop up local. Is there? Can you click on that? You can see the red yes, arrow sir. in the identified. Wait. On the top, 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 top. This one, top. this one. Oh my God. Okay. No, always no. Uh, allow pop ups. Okay, okay. Always allow pop ups. Maybe now. And now you can try. Yeah. Noted down as a support ticket, uh, <laughs> which, yeah, which is resolved by Bupinda. <laughs> I think now it will happen. Yeah, you, I saw this error before, but yeah, it's work. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Bupinda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Do that. Okay, Bupinda, just uh, cut down this uh, video. Maybe we can post it there. Uh, in our yeah. <coughs> ERP server access, uh, uh, we put it the errors, right? So if you're not able to download the template from the HANA migration cockpit, this is the quick one, okay? We can we can cut this small video and put it there. Yeah, thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.